Hello, this is Mr. Bus, and in this video, I'll go through the Dihybrid and Two Trade Crosses worksheet. I'm probably going to have to make this into two videos uh, because the first part of this is going through some examples of Dihybrid and Two Trade Crosses with pea plants. And then later on, the second part is uh, similar to an activity we used to do in class with uh, corn plants. Okay, we'll jump right in here. Obviously, you can read the definitions there. Number one. We are going to cross a pea plant that is heterozygous for both round seed shape and purple flower color. So let's come up with the genotype first for that plant. So heterozygous means one of each. Round is big R, but heterozygous means you also have the little r. So we're going to cross a big R, little r and purple flower color. Purple is capital P, and heterozygous means you have one of each. Capital P, lowercase. And we're just gonna cross two of those. Okay. So that's the first step, is figuring out what the genotypes are there. All right, then remember, um, in opponent square, we put the possible gametes for one of the parents on the left and the possible gametes for the other parents on the top. Now this is a 16 square upon a square versus the four because it's a dihybrid. Oh, well, it's a, it's a dihybrid, it's a two trait cross, which is dihybrid is an example of a two trait cross. So how do we do that? Well, we have to look and say, okay, if we have this genotype, what are the possible combinations? So meaning uh, if I take either the capital R and lowercase r, take the capital R first, that could, whoops, going a little too slow there, that could combine with the capital P, and that's one possible gamete, or it could combine with the lowercase p. Right? And the lowercase r could combine with the uppercase, and the lowercase r could combine with the lowercase. Sometimes people want to use the FOIL method, which is first, outer, inner, last. I'm just meaning these are both the first, these are both the outer, these are both the inner, and then there's the last. So that's what I just did, basically, uh, FOIL first, outer, inner, last has a way to um, work on figuring out those combinations. And then, of course, since this um, second parent here is the same, we're going to have the same uh, possible uh, gamete combinations here, allele combinations in the gametes. All right now, bring the letters down and across. This will just take a second here. I try to exaggerate my lower cases because um, capital P, lowercase p looks the same otherwise. You can fill these out too while I am. Okay, now that it's filled out, we can answer the question. The question is, when you're done, all right, show what the ratios of each trait are. Okay, well, the trait, I'll use a different color here. The trait possibilities are, meaning phenotype, that it's either going to be round or wrinkled, and it's either going to be purple flower or white flower, right? And so it might be round and purple, or it might be round and white color. It might be wrinkled and purple, or it might be wrinkled and white color. So 
I'll write the dominant one possibilities first. Possibility of round and wrinkled. I'll try to write neater here. So round and wrinkled would be... <laughs> no. Did that wrong, sorry. Round and purple would be the dominant. Sorry, screwing you up there. Okay, so round only needs one capital R, purple only needs one capital P. So any that have at least one capital R and at least one capital P would be have the phenotype of round and purple. Let's see if I did that right. It's supposed to be nine. Yes, nine out of the 16 are that phenotype. Okay, next we could have a possibility I'll, I'll, I'll go round and um, this time instead of purple, I'll use the recessive. So round and white is a possible um, way that this could turn out. And so we'll see if any of those would be like that. So round would need to have one capital R and white flower color would have to be lowercase p's, both of them. So are any round, yep, yep, yep. So three have at least one capital R and both lowercase p's, so it'd be three sixteenths. Okay, what about um, now wrinkled and purple? Use another color here. So that would be lowercase r's and capital P's, at least one. So those three, another three sixteenths there, we uh, wrinkled in purple. And then last but not least, the two recessive um, phenotypes would be wrinkled and white flower. Okay, so. And you like that? Yep, there's one. And I know that seems like a lot of work that we just did there, but the reason I want to do that is because um, in a dye hybrid cross, which is what this was, it, it was a dye hybrid cross, hybrid for both and hybrid for both. It's This is the ratios you're going to get. You're going to get 9 sixteenths of the offspring showing both of the dominant traits. All right, you're gonna get three sixteenths of the offspring showing one of the dominant traits, three sixteenths of the offspring showing the other, and then one sixteenth showing both the uh, recessive traits. So this is known as a nine, three, three, one um, offspring, expected offspring uh, phenotype ratio, nine, three, three, one for a dihybrid cross. So you might see that on a test question or something like that. Um, not that you have to memorize that, but um, that's just something that be aware of. Okay, number two is just another cross. This one isn't a dihybrid cross. It's just a two-trait cross. So it's similar, but a little different. What will be the expected offspring ratios if we cross a hybrid pea plant heterozygous for round and purple? Okay, so that's what we just did. So Okay. With a pea plant pure breeding for both wrinkled seed, that would be that, and white flowers. So that's going to be our cross. So we'll put one of the parent genotype combinations on the side, one of them on the top. Um, this one this is easy because there's only one thing that it could be, right? And then this one, again, we do the foil method uh, first. Outer, uh, inner, and last. All right, and then there we go. This, these are all going to be the same, all right? Right there. That'll be the same for those. That'll be the same for those. That'll be the same for those. Okay, so here we're getting um, 
a one fourth. I'll reduce it, right? That's four sixteenths. So that's a one fourth of that, one fourth of that, one fourth of that, and one fourth of that, which is what I would call a one to one to one to one uh, ratio of getting. Um, I'll just I'll just say them. This would be round or purple, which would be both the dominant. This would be round and white flower. This would be wrinkled seed and purple flower. And this would be wrinkled seed and white flower, right? So a one to one to one to one for each of those possibilities. All right, so number three, we're almost ready to move on to the next uh, section here. Number three is um, way too much to do a, a Punnett square for, right? It's just, once you start to see um, three, one, two, three traits that we're talking about at once, you're just not gonna create a grid for that. You're not gonna be like, um, okay, what are the possible, that capital T could go with that capital A, which would also then could go with that capital P, or that could go with that, and then that could go with that. You're not gonna start to do all those possibilities. You could if you wanted to challenge yourself, but you're not, it's actually a lot easier just to use our math skills here. All right, so it says, um, can you tell what the odds are of getting a tall plant well, tall, remember that's capital T, capital T, or capital T, lowercase t. What are the chances that we get a tall plant? Well, let's just talk about that first. Well, okay. So if I kind of extract the uh, tall or short genotypes, right? I have capital T, lowercase t times capital T, lowercase t, t. Uh, you might not even need to do a partner square cross. I'm just gonna show you that, just as a reminder that if we did that cross, um, let's write it right in here. We're gonna get, right, we're gonna get 75% chance to get tall. Right, we only need one of those. All right, I'm gonna write it as a fraction though. There's a 3 fourths chance that I get a capital T, capital T, or a capital T, lowercase t. Right, and then we're gonna multiply. Why multiply? Because this isn't an or statement. We're not saying get a tall or terminal or purple. We're saying tall and terminal and purple. Even though the word and isn't in there, it's implied. It's an and problem. So we're gonna use our probability laws, we're gonna multiply. Okay, look at the next trait um, of axial or terminal. So we wanna to, to know what the odds are of getting terminal here. Okay, well if I cross that with that, I'm not even gonna show the Punnett square cross. Here with this one, there's only there, you're going to give a lowercase a for sure. Well, terminal is lowercase a, lowercase a, okay? So for sure, we're gonna get a gamete with one lowercase a. What are the chances we get an, a gamete from here with a lowercase a? Well, one half, right? Because there's one lowercase a out of two possible choices. So we have a one half chance. You can do the Punnett square cross if you want to on that, if you don't believe me, or to check that out. And what about the third here? Purple flower. Purple is capital P, capital P, or capital P, lowercase p, since that's the dominant trait. And you need one of those two genotypes for it to be purple. And we're looking at that times that. Okay? And that's another... Actually, no, that's a 100% chance, right? Because for sure it's going to be purple since this parent will always ca pass on the dominant purple uh, allele. We're uh, going to have for sure. So that'd be... You don't even need to include it. Or you just write times 1 or 1 over 1 or something like that. I'm not even going to include it since that's... 100% chance. So, um, and it's not gonna change the math at all. Three times one is three, four times two is eight. We have a three eighths chance of getting a tall plant with terminal purple flower from that cross. All right, I'm going to uh, probably put this video in a playlist so that the next video that plays will be starting with the next part. I'm gonna stop and restart another video with the ear of corn activity section.